What's going on, Mavs fans? Welcome into NBA Now from Chat Sports. And in today's show, I'm going to be looking at five potential draft prospects the Dallas Mavericks could consider in the 2020 NBA draft. Now, before I get into those five prospects, I want to remind you of the last five first round picks the Dallas Mavericks have had. Now, this is the first time they'll have one of their own first round picks in a little while outside of that Luka Doncic and Dennis Smith Jr. year. They get a hold of this one. Right now, as it stands, the Mavs would have the 18th overall pick in the draft. So let's look at those last five picks. Luka Doncic in 2018, of course, was traded. He wasn't actually the pick. It was Trey Young, but you know, particulars there. Luka Doncic was a Maverick in the end. Dennis Smith Jr. back in 2017 was another lottery pick for the Dallas Mavericks. And then they had Justin Anderson. That's when they were picking in about the 20s. Justin Anderson out of Virginia at uh, in 2015. I liked the pick at the time. Obviously, it didn't pan out for Justin Anderson. Shane Larkin back in 2013, the infamous Shane Larkin over Giannis Antetokounmpo pick. And then in 2012, Jared Cunningham out of Oregon State. Nobody really remembers what he did in Dallas. He didn't do a whole lot. That was near the end of the first round. They traded for him with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Again, another guy who wasn't actually the pick at the time, but the Mavs made a draft night trade for him along with two second round picks back in 2012. Now, before I get into my picks, I want to know from you guys, who do you want the Dallas Mavericks to target in this year's NBA draft? Everyone has their dream pick. Now, remember, they're picking around number 18 in the draft, so be somewhat realistic and give me a name you might like to see in Dallas next season. Let's start off with this one, Tyrese Maxey out of Kentucky. Now, the first thing I want to clear up is this guy is projected to be a lottery pick. But people have been talking, and he may fall as low as number 20 in the draft. And if he does... That means he'd be available for the Mavs at 18. Do I expect him to fall that far? Absolutely not. This guy is incredible. He is a Texas native. He's a great finisher around the rim, a gritty defender. Now, one of the best things I like about him is that defense. He can come in and guard any point guard in the league right now or shooting guard as well. He's strong. He's got an NBA-ready body. Now, the thing about Maxi is that He's not a great passer, not a great facilitator or playmaker for his teammates. He didn't do that incredibly well at Kentucky, but that's okay. Because if you come to Dallas, you're playing with Luka Doncic, you don't have to be an incredible playmaker. This year at Kentucky, he averaged 13.9 points per game, four boards, three assists, and only 31% from three, but his shot is mechanically sound, so I expect that to trend upward. Now, the Mavs do have a lot of point guards on the roster currently. They've got, of course, Luka Doncic, who will be the starting point guard. DeLon Wright has been coming off the bench and kind of playing the two-guard position as well. Jalen Brunson, of course, hurt his shoulder, but he will be back. And I like him a lot. He's one of my favorite Mavericks on the team right now. And he will be in that backup point guard role as well. And then J.J. Bray. Now, Bray is going to be a free agent by the time Maxi would become a Dallas Maverick, if that is the case. But Tyrese Maxey can play the one or the two, so I'm not too worried about him being in that point guard rotation in Rick Carlisle's offense and Rick Carlisle's plays, really, at all. So, do you think Tyrese Maxey will fall to Dallas at 18? It's kind of a long shot. I don't think it's going to happen, but I wanted to at least talk about him and one other guy that we'll get to here in just a second that could potentially fall all the way to 18, even though they're projected to go a lot higher. Now, before I get into the next guy that could be a free faller on draft night, I want to tell you about our friends over at Fanatics that are hooking up Mavs fans with an incredible deal. When you go to chatsports.com slash Mavs T, you get $12 to $15. These Luka Doncic t-shirts are incredible. I've already gotten three myself from this website. You go to chatsports.com slash Mavs T, $12 to 15 bucks for any Luka Doncic t-shirt you want. It's a steal. Go check out Fanatics today. Now let's talk about another guy that I think could fall to 18, but I do not expect him to. I want to make that abundantly clear. I think he's going to be a lottery pick. It's R.J. Hampton. R.J. Hampton out of Little Elm, Texas. And then, of course, he went and played in New Zealand this year instead of playing college basketball. Now, he did get hurt, so he shut down his pro career a little early and went and came back to the States to train more for the NBA draft. Now, the thing about Hampton is that he needs to improve his jump shot and he needs to improve that defense as well. He's got a wiry frame, but he's got a frame that can add a lot of muscle as an NBA player, and I really do expect him to. And if that happens, he could be an incredible finisher around the rim. If he reaches his full potential, I think he's a top five potential pick. But if he busts, if he's not like what he's supposed to be, I still think he in, comes in at the early 20s. And I think that could be where the Mavs could pick him up. But I expect RJ Hampton to be selected somewhere between 10 to 14, maybe even a little earlier. But I wanted to at least talk about him here for the Mavs as a potential fit. Now, this year in the pros, you got to remember he was playing against professional talent over in New Zealand. 8.8 .8 points per game, 
3.9 rebounds, 2.4 assists. The three-point percentage is what really is going to hurt his draft stock. He only shot 29.5% from three while playing over there. But his shot, again, like Tyrese Maxey, looks really good. He's got the mechanics of a good jump shot, and I think it'll come around. Got a pretty good mid-range jumper and can get to the rim and finish with ease as well. Let's say RJ Hampton does come into Dallas. I think you got to start this kid right off the bat. I think you put him in at that 2-3 position. Luka Doncic, Tim Hardaway Jr., RJ Hampton, Dorian Finney-Smith, and Chris Ops Porzingis. That's your starting five, not just for next year, but heck, for the next three to five years even. Luka, RJ, and KP can all grow together. They're all about the same age. They're all really young. Tim Hardaway Jr. is kind of your veteran there. And Dorian Finney-Smith, the incredible defensive presence as well. I like RJ Hampton a lot, but I know a lot of other NBA teams do as well. So I don't expect him to be there at 18. But if he is, the Mavs should absolutely take a chance on this kid. So which potential draft night free faller would you rather have in Dallas? These are the two guys that I talked about, Tyrese Maxey or RJ Hampton. Let me know down in the comment section below. I'm going to go with Tyrese Maxey. I think he adds a lot more on the defensive end. And he's, again, another playmaker next to Luka. And he can play the one or the two. Now, Hampton... He can play the one through three. I think he'll play the three if he puts on enough weight, but he can also handle the ball and be a point guard in the league as well. But let me know which one you'd rather have down in the comment section. Now let's talk about Jemias Ramsey out of Texas Tech. Again, another Texas kid coming in here that could make sense on the Dallas Mavericks next season. The best thing about Ramsey is that he provides a true scoring punch off the bench or in the starting five. Now, Come draft night, come in the NBA, he's not going to be a starter. That's why I do believe he will be available at 18. So these next three guys we're going to look at are all going to kind of fall in that same range of probably the 15 to 25 range. And that's right in Dallas's sweet spot. Now, a good thing about Ramsey, great catch and shoot player. And when you have a guy like Luka Doncic who can pass the ball and find the open man, you need guys that can make a catch and shoot jump shot. That's what Ramsey does well. Not a great defender, but he's got good length and that helps him make up for what he doesn't do on the defensive end. This year at Tech, he averaged 15 points per game and four boards, two assists, not really a playmaker at all, but there it is, 42.6% from beyond the three-point arc, and that is really what the Mavs need. When you look at guys that you want to draft that can be catch-and-shoot players, that's what Ramsey does. Now, he's going to be a wing in the NBA, a two or a three, and when you look at the wings Dallas currently has, it's not that impressive of a depth. Tim Hardaway Jr. and Dorian Finney-Smith, those two, solid. Dorian Finney-Smith playing a lot of four as well. But then you got Justin Jackson, who did not have a good year for the Dallas Mavericks. You got Courtney Lee, who's going to be a free agent by the time the draft rolls around. And you got Michael Kidd Gilchrist, who's also going to be a free agent by the time the draft rolls around. And he didn't really show you a lot in Dallas anyway. So that's why I think you pick up Ramsey. You get a great shooter and a guy who can become a good defender as well. But which position? So we just talked about the wings. We talked about two guards in Hampton and Maxey. Which position, though, does Dallas need to focus on the most in the draft? Let me know in the comment section below. Point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. Maybe it's six man. Maybe it's just another shooter. Whatever it may be, let me know down below. Now let's talk about Aaron Neesmith. This kid's out of Vanderbilt, and this kid has already caught my eye. A guy that I am already really excited about when it gets to the pro level because I think he is one of, if not the best pure shooter in the draft this year. Now, the thing about Neesmith is that he is a smart defender. He's got a good basketball IQ on the defensive end, but his athleticism kind of hampers him from being an incredible defender. Think of a Wesley Matthews type kind of defender where not a great athlete, but he's smart and gritty on the defensive end. Now, another thing about Neesmith is that he doesn't finish well at the rim. He's a good shooter. That's what you want him to do. You don't want him attacking the rim at all. That's not what he did at Vanderbilt. But what he did do at Vanderbilt was put up 23 points per game. 23 points per game, 4.9 rebounds, not passing the ball a lot because he's a spot-up shooter. And look at the three-point percentage. That's not a typo, folks. That's not per 36. That's his average, 52.2% from beyond the three-point arc. That is what Dallas needs in the mix. When you look at who the shooters are for Mav, the Mavs right now, you got Seth Curry, of course, at the top shooting 45%. Courtney Lee's right up there, but he's not taking that many because he's not playing that much. Same thing with J.J. Barea. He's one of your top three shooters. And then you got Tim Hardaway Jr. and Maxi Kleba, both incredible shooters, and they're two of the best shooters on the team right now. But if you add Neesmith, you get a guy who comes off the bench and makes a jump shot whenever and however you need him to on the court. But there's a chance that Dallas doesn't even keep this pick. Let's, get, let's remember they do have a second round pick. They got Golden State's second round pick, which will probably be the 31st overall pick. So maybe the Mavs look to trade that first round 
pick. But what do you think Dallas will do? Not what they should do, but what they will do. Type T for trade, type K for keep that first round pick. I'd like to see them keep it. I think they could really add a good young player to build in the young core with Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis. However, if they do package that in the Golden State pick on draft night, you could get a pretty good player out of that deal. And before I get into my last player that I want to talk about for the Mavs, I'm going to remind you to check out our friends at Fanatics when you go to chatsports.com slash Mavs T. You get these incredible Luka Doncic t-shirts for an incredible price. Go check it out now on Fanatics. Let's talk about one last guy, and that's Josh Green out of Arizona. Now, the thing about Josh Green is that he's projected to be a good 3 and D slasher in the NBA. However, the three, the three ball really isn't there quite yet. He's a good slasher. He gets to the rim. He's athletic. He's an incredible defender. I think his defense is the most valuable part of his game. I really, really do. And that's something that Dallas desperately needs is another wing defender like Josh Green. Now, he doesn't create offense very well for others. He's not a playmaker at all. He gets to the rim. He finishes there. That's what he does. And he can shoot the three ball. When you look at his numbers this past season, he averaged 12 points per game four boards, two assists, and 36% from three, which isn't bad, but 36% from three in college doesn't always translate super well to 36% from three in the pros. I like Green a lot. I don't know if I like him as much as Ramsey or Neesmith, and I definitely don't like him as much as Maxi or RJ Hampton. So let's talk about those five guys one more time. I want to give you a rundown of the five that we talked about on today's show. Tyrese Maxey, of course, out of Kentucky, a guy that I don't expect to be there at 18, but there's reports that he could fall that far. Same thing with RJ Hampton, a guy who probably, again, isn't going to be there, probably going to be a lottery pick, but if he's available, the Mavs should take a swing on him. And then you got Ramsey out of Texas Tech. I'm a big fan of his game and his shooting ability. Aaron Neesmith, the kid that I would love to see in a Dallas Maverick uniform next year. And of course, Josh Green, the last guy we just touched on there, the 3 and D slasher out of Arizona. So which of these five guys that I talked about on today's show would you most like to see in Dallas next season? Let me know in the comment section below. Again, I told you my pick. It's Tyrese Maxey out of Kentucky. Don't know if he'll be there, but I would love to see him in Dallas. Guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.